Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of our Let's Make a Survival Adventure RPG game. And look at what I've got here. Mohamed Hadduku actually made a better graphic for my player character. And I have to say, I'm pretty fond of that, holy cow. Thank you so much for doing that, of course I'm gonna use it as of this point. Anyways, today I want to do quite a few things. I also want to set up some kind of a simple inventory and we're gonna expand on that system. But first we need to keep things simple so that we can go more easily into the advanced stuff. But now that I have this awesome freaking character, I kind of want to do at least something with it. Let's go ahead and set up a second sprite for this. I want to not edit the image, I want to kind of duplicate this. There we go, now we're gonna go inside of this and hopefully I will be able to grab everything and then kind of flip it around. Let's see, maybe we can do something here. Yeah, flip all current frames. No, not this way. I want to mirror it, of course. There we go, beautiful. So now we can walk towards the left or the right. Isn't that absolutely amazing? Let's go ahead and maybe set this up. I can close off the main room, we do not need it for the time being. You noticed I removed the trees and rocks because we're gonna spawn them in very simply with a script today. But let's take care of the player first. I kind of want to rename the script. I think I'm gonna make this a very large script and it's gonna be player action. So everything the player can do and needs to be on the player on the step event is gonna go in here. If we open this up, we have the player movement already. So I'm gonna rename this to player actions. And here we're gonna have the movement. And I guess at the bottom here, we can add the code for the orientation. Or maybe we can even include it in here. So if I press the D key, then we want to switch to the second frame of our sprite. Now, do we actually have something on the create event here? Yeah, we are executing the global variables on the player. So to the global variables, we could also add the image index. I'm gonna set this to zero, so the image doesn't flicker between the two images we have. I guess we can also close this off so we have a better overview. And right here, I want to set the image index to one if we hit the D key, right? So that's what we're gonna do. And if we hit the A key, we want to do it the other way around. So right here, we're gonna set it to zero. Great, let's test this out. Oh, we still have the player movement somewhere in there. Let's actually see, is that in here in the step event? No, it actually changed here. What is happening? Yeah, this is a little bit weird. Let me just grab this once again. I kind of think this got confused. There we go, now it's working. Uh, but we are actually going between the two. Okay, I see. But as soon as I hit the D or A key, it's set to the correct direction. In order to prevent this from happening, probably in the global variables, we want to set up the image speed as well. So we're gonna say image speed equals zero. And this should prevent this from happening. Of course, we're gonna make the player movement a little bit more interesting than that. But for now, this seems to be working out fine. So there we go. <laughs> Great, let's take care of a few other things. The first thing I want to do is create a storage crate. So let's go ahead and do that. It's gonna go into the category storage and it's gonna be a crate. We're gonna set this to 32 by 32 as per usual. And I'm probably gonna make these crates uh, stackable so you can put them next to each other and then the images are gonna adapt. But that is something we can think about later on. For the time being, I just want to go ahead and do something very simple. Let's see, we could do that. Yes, that is going to be our storage crate for the time being. I also want to make an object for that. Object storage crate, it's gonna have our sprite and it's gonna be solid. We don't have to do anything about the collisions because it's filling out the entire tile. Good, now that we have that, let's add a couple of things to the global variables. Right here, I want to add the tile size. So I'm gonna make another global variable called tile size, which is 32. But, you know, maybe we want to adapt this later on and we don't want to go through all of our scripts removing this number. Next up, I want to add a couple of world variables. So let's say how many things are gonna spawn in the world and this might be adjustable through a menu later on. We are going to have a couple of trees, I presume. Let's say we're gonna spawn in 10. And also we're gonna have a couple of rocks. We're also gonna spawn in 10 for the time being. We only deal with these two resources at the moment. So let's go ahead and do the world generation. And I'm just gonna mark this off as temporary. Good, we're gonna do a for loop for this one. Let's say for i equals zero. And as long as i is smaller than the amount of trees, 
we want in the world, then we want to set i to plus plus. So for every time we do this, which should be approximately 10 times, I'm never sure, sometimes it's 11 because zero also counts, you know. But anyways, we want to set a random x and y position. So let's go ahead and do that. And we want to do it within the room width, of course. And also the y position, we're gonna do random room height. There we go. Now that we have the position, we can go ahead and create an instance. Now, you have to do this in a different way than previously in Game Maker. You have to specify the layer you want the instance to be created on. Now, at the bottom here, you can see what we need. I'm gonna start with my X position, then Y position. We are going to need the layer and within the room I actually already renamed this. So if we have a look at this, we can see my layer is called objects, my instance layer. So that is going to be useful because we need to type that in exactly. And also what do we want to spawn? We want to spawn the world tree object. Great, that should already have been it. Now let's go ahead and actually copy this over. We also want to do this for the rocks and we basically have to do it for everything we want to spawn. And right here we can specify how many things we want. So let's make sure we change that. This is amount rocks already and we want to spawn the rocks as well. Let's go ahead and test this out to make sure we haven't made any mistakes and we actually did. The layer object does not exist. What are you talking about? Uh, I called it objects, of course. And there we go. We got our objects. Let's actually count. That's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it is actually 10 and not 11. Very, very good. The collision still works. That is brilliant. So we do have a basic generation. Of course, it is kind of a crappy generation. I'm aware of that. It's gonna change. But we need something in the world in order to interact with it. So the next thing I would like to do is actually spawn one of my crates in order to be able to store a couple of objects in here. We're just gonna put it right here in the center of the room. Now what I would like to achieve is go to a rock and then we're gonna hit a key in order to gather it up. It should be added to my inventory. And then the next step would be to store it in the crate. For today I just want to store it on my character. We're not gonna do a fully fleshed out inventory just yet. We just want to keep track of what we have on our character and be able to display it. Now, one more thing I would like to do is add a simple script called move snap. So script move snap. We want to switch that into game maker language. Move snap and this will make sure that we actually align the trees etc to the grid. That's gonna be necessary for what I have in mind. And of course we're gonna go with the global tile size, global tile size snap. Great, let's close this off and this is gonna be applied to my world tree and world rock. We can simply do it with the script like that. Move snap, close this off and then object world rock also needs a move snap as they are created. Good, let's continue. Alright guys, I thought about this and I think I have a good idea of what I want to do. I added a couple of variables within the global variables. We have inventory wood set to zero and inventory stone set to zero. So we start with nothing in our inventory and also I added these two variables yield trees and yield rocks. So each tree we fell will potentially yield us four locks and each rock will potentially yield us five stone. These are of course numbers we can always adapt, but let's go ahead and add a couple of lines right here. We want to go ahead and do the harvest mechanic for the trees. In order to do that, I want to figure out which one is the nearest tree to my current location. GameMaker has a very nice variable for that. I'm just gonna set up my own variable right here. So within the nearest tree variable, I'm gonna store the nearest instance. So instance nearest is what you can use in order to get that. And I want to get the closest instance to my current X and Y position. And the instance we check, of course, is the world tree. So now we have this stored within this variable. This is actually an ID for this specific object. So let's go ahead and set up an if condition. Let's say, for instance, if we hit the space bar. So keyboard check released and it should be VK space. But I also want to check if the object is nearby me. So it should be, let's say, within five pixels or something along these lines. So we're gonna say and distance to object. And of course the object we are checking is the nearest tree. And we want to say if that is smaller than five, we are fine with that. 
Good stuff, let's open up the brackets. Now, what do we want to happen? We first of all want to destroy the tree, but we also want to gain some wood in our inventory. We're not gonna do it fancy right now. Eventually, I want the wood to drop on the floor and you have to grab it or something along these lines. But for now, we're just gonna directly give it into our inventory, no fancy effects. In the global variable script, we set up this variable, the inventory wood. Of course, we want to set this to plus something and we set up another variable that tells us how much we yield. Now, I want to do a mathematical function here. We're gonna floor the result of what we get of a random number between one and four logs. So floor random, we want to do the yield trees number. And once we have the random number and it is rounded, we want to make sure we don't get a zero. So we say plus one. And this should give us always something between 1 and 3 logs, theoretically, but we will have to observe. Good, so I actually want to close off this bracket and at the end of the calculation we add the plus 1. That is better. Anyways, now we have the stuff in our inventory, but the tree is still there, we have to destroy it. In order to destroy something, you use the command instance destroy. However, this is always referring to the object the script is on. So what we have to do is we have to tell GameMaker that we want to do something with another object. So with the nearest tree object that we still have in this variable, we want to go ahead and destroy it. So instance destroy. Everything I write within here, within these two brackets, is going to be executed on the nearest tree. So I could even add more code to this, which we're eventually going to do, because right here we would, for instance, have to create the locks dropping on the floor or whatever. We would have to decide the image, for instance, if we hack down a tree, it takes a while, and maybe the tree gets out of shape or falls down, we have to add images. But for now, let's keep it simple. Now we can simply copy this over for the rocks. So let's actually do that. We're gonna say nearest rock is instance nearest and we want to do object world rock. And then uh, we have to also change this one here, of course, nearest rock, inventory rock, floor random yield rocks and with nearest rock, so basically everything. <laughs> but that should theoretically work out, right? Let's go ahead and actually test this. So we can uh, move around, we had no error. If I'm close to a tree and hit the spacebar, it gets destroyed. If I hit the spacebar right here, it doesn't get destroyed until I come to a certain distance. There we go. So that is working out pretty well. Wow, that's not too shammy. I should have made the crate a three-dimensional, to be honest. Also, the sprite. I mean, the sprite, it's very, very good. It's much better than anything I can do. But at some point, we will have to draw the sprites a little bit from the top down. So it's not directly in front, but slightly angled from the top. But hell, I'm no artist. I will not be able to do that. It's still nice to have actually nice looking graphics for this project. Alright, so now let's set up a very, very simple inventory so that we can actually display all of these things. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new script. I'm gonna call this inventory, simple as that. And what we want to do is also convert this, of course, give it a nice title, inventory, and then we want to set this up on the player and it needs to be on a draw event because we want to draw a GUI for that, at least for the time being. I'm gonna set up the script and it's the inventory script. There we go, we can close off the player once again and then let's go ahead and edit this bad boy. Whenever you have a draw event and you need the object to be displayed, you will have to set up a draw self function. If you don't do that, you will not see your character. Maybe it has actually become obsolete with the latest game maker, I'm not so sure. I'm gonna leave this out for the time being, but we should keep it in mind. Anyways, let's start with drawing the background for our inventory. I want to set up a couple of variables. Let's say the inventory width for the time being is gonna be like three tiles or so. The inventory height, it doesn't need to be too high. We only have two resources. I'm gonna do it really simple, guys. I just need to make sure that things are working out and that we can go into more daring territory afterwards. So what we want to do is set a color. I want to do a background. For that I'm gonna set up a rectangle. And we're gonna do... Um, let's just draw it on the top left corner of the screen. So it's gonna be 0, 0. Now the X2 is actually the top right corner of the rectangle that you want. So basically the width. 
we want inventory width and then and then the y2 is the bottom left or right corner that you want and that is the inventory height good now do we want this to be an outline no we don't we want this to be a full rectangle next up we want to do a border so let's say we're gonna set the color to c black this time and then we draw another rectangle we say zero zero inventory width inventory height and we set this to true this time let's have a look at that there we go it is on the top right corner you can see we have the outline and everything ready for us so now that we have that, let's go ahead and set up a couple of text boxes. I'm gonna set the color once again, even though right now it is still black, but maybe we add something in between, switch the color, so it's always good to set the color before you draw something. We're gonna draw a text this time, and I want it to be not at zero. Let's do it at two, so it's not directly at the beginning of our square that we drew. And I want the first item to be at zero times line height. I want to set up a variable here. The line height, if I'm not mistaken, can be about 15 with the standard font. So at pixel 15, the next line comes and we can say zero times line height. So that would equal zero. This is the first item and this is where I want it. Now we need to set up a string. So first of all, we say wood with a double point and then a space. We close this off and then we want to add a string to this. The string of course is going to be the inventory word that we set up and then we can finish this line. So this is just going to combine these two words. This is a unchangeable word and then of course we have a changeable variable added to that making sure it's separated with a spacebar between the double point and the number. Then we're gonna do the same thing again, two, zero, no, now it's one times line height. So this is the next item and it's gonna be stone for now, plus string inventory stone. There we go. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is actually all we needed for the time being. We have set it up. Yeah, the draw GUI event is there. So let's give it a test. Whoops, I actually misspelled this a tiny little bit. All right, there we go. We got our wood zero and stone zero. So now let's go ahead and walk up to a tree, hit the space bar, and we can see we received three words. So if we do that here again, we now have six. Let's make sure that it is actually random. Now we have nine. Doesn't look so random right now. Let's pick this one. Ten. Okay, we only got one word from this tree. Now we got four word from this one. Seventeen, that was three again. And we get twenty. Beautiful. So you can see what we wanted to achieve is basically achieved, but let's test it with the stone. Ah, ah, okay. Inventory rock. Not set. Let's check this out. Ah, inventory rock, of course. We went with inventory stone. Inventory rock makes no sense here because we do receive stones, but we get them from rocks. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it should work now. Let's walk up to a rock. There we go. We received four stone, three stone this time. Let's grab some wood. We get 12. So that was actually five stone from this rock. Pretty good. Four stone from the last one here. Yes. Okay, so basic inventory is working. We just need a nice way to display it and maybe make it interactable with drag and drop and a couple of pictures instead of just text. But, you know, it's the same thing. At the end of the day, an inventory is just a couple of numbers and scripts. With that out of the way, we're gonna wrap up today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye.